Saints fire Pete Carmichael. It has happened. The news is real and it's spectacular. Pete Carmichael, Saints offensive coordinator, is now unemployed. And the Saints have a hole at the OC position. Also got rid of a few other offensive staff uh, positions. Running back coach, wide receiver coach, and an offensive assistant, I believe, or an offensive analyst. Somewhere along there, senior advisor, some, some crazy title. So a lot of shaking up in the offensive coordinator room. We're here after further review, Matt Mascana. We are reacting to him reacting to the news about Pete Carmichael being fired and what this means for the Saints moving forward. Today's the end of an era on uh, Airline Jesus. Drive there in Christ. Metairie. And I know blew there my are eardrums a lot of off. Saints fans who are going ah. to celebrate today. Christ. I understand that. We all want our team to win. Yes, I do. Yes. And coaches who go into this profession know it is a results oriented uh, let me say this okay there was there's been yeah, there's been so much tip tap toeing little little timid little, little toes tapping around just skirting around the subject on twitter i've seen a lot of people saying guys don't forget pete carmichael was a great new orleanian don't forget he, he's a great person I, I, again i don't care okay if he if that's all fine and dandy run for city council doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is offensive rankings. Okay. EPA. All right. Yards per play, otherwise known as YPP. Okay. Wins and losses. Okay. Division titles. Okay. Competing for the NFC. Super Bowl runs. Development of quarterbacks and players. That's what I care about. All right. You know, you, you want friends? You want a friend? Get a dog. You know what I'm saying? Oriented business which can be cutthroat and cruel sometimes. But it's not cruel. Look, let me <clears throat> look, look. You work somewhere for 15, 20 years and, and you're not doing a great job by every analytical measure. It's not cruel to be let go. Okay. You had a good run. 15 years. It is what it is. This, this isn't a cruel situation. And there's no cruel intentions. Okay. You know, it shouts Sarah Michelle Geller. Okay. Very pivotal movie uh, when I was a young man. Different video for a different day, though. Was fired today in New Orleans, along with several other assistants. Yes. Uh, Jeff Duncan early this morning with kind of a cryptic tweet that it was going to be a busy day. He was Airline right. Drive. Yeah. Yeah. The news started to leak, and a short time later, the Saints confirmed it there that uh, they parted ways with three assistant coaches. Uh, it was Pete Carmichael, the longest tenured of the Saints assistants, 18 years in New Orleans. Offensive assistant Bob Bicknell and wide receivers coach Cody Burns also Get him up out of today here. by the New Orleans Saints. But, of course, the focus is going to be on Pete Carmichael as yeah, well as should yeah. because of a lot of the struggles the offense had this year and a year ago and since the Peyton Breeze era ended. Or since Pete Carmichael is taking over calling the offense. That's another way of putting it, right? Those happened in tandem, in stereo, in concert, some would say. It's not since Peyton left. It's since Carmichael has been at the helm. That is the issue. That is the problem. All of the good stuff, all the positive numbers, all the ranking, all the explosive offenses, all the Super Bowl runs, all the Drew Brees, all that stuff, with Sean Peyton, all of a sudden vanished when Pistol Pete was at the helm. And we got a whole batch of bad analytics for two straight years. Um, and... We all know that change was needed. Yes. There are so many analytics that we could look at. I mean, that is part of the way this goes. I think this is the reason. A lot of people have asked me. A lot of people have asked me. So I, as y'all, I'm sure, saw on Twitter, I did an hour-long uh, radio spot on the Gulf Coast. And one of the questions that was asked during the interview was how am I competing, beating, in the ratings, the big boys of New Orleans media, the WWLs, the, I don't want to get into it, you know. But how are we winning the war? How are we growing at the rate we're growing? What do we have to offer that no one else can do? I really think this new, like, analytical wave, the, the deep stats, the deep data, really watching the games, really putting in the effort on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays and during the week, that is why I think we're pushing ahead when it comes to analysis. I've said this before with the big mass media, like ESPN, like Stephen A. Smith, 
you know, Skip Bayless on Fox and, and whoever else. I don't think they watch the games. I think they watch some games, but they're not watching every game. And you can tell. They cover certain teams way different than other teams. They have the narratives completely wrong with certain players and coaches and whatever it is, even offenses and defenses. The deta- the analytics and the data is there now to where you can't just throw stuff out there. You can't just say stuff. You can't just say, oh, Pete Carmichael did this. He's a good coach. You can't just say, oh, well, the you know Jalen Hurts is the MVP. You can't just say, oh, well, uh, I, you know, I think Dak Prescott should be the MVP. Or I think uh, Kevin Stefanski should be coach of the year. Without any kind of research to back it up, without any kind of analytics to back it up, without any kind of stats to back it up, Everything is so available now. It's so transparent now that if you aren't if you aren't on the forefront of it, you're going to either look like a fool, aka everyone who voted Kevin Stefanski for Coach of the Year, or Jalen Hurts for MVP. You're either going to look like a fool, or you're going to be so far behind because once stuff like this happens, once once it's out in the public, eight months ago, you know we were saying I don't think the Buccaneers are that bad. And now you're hearing people be like, well, actually, the Buccaneers roster was pretty good. We should have seen this coming. They didn't put the work in. Okay, same with, same with Pete Carmichael, same with these offensive coordinators and head coaches. The Mike McCarthy's of the world, the names, the people who have been around, the Ron Rivera's, they can't just step back, even like Mike Tomlin to an extent. Coach Bill Belichick, you can't just live on, on this experience and you've been around and you've been doing this. You have to have it in the details. The analytics do not lie. The stats do not lie. The play calling EPA, all that stuff, all the rankings we've looked at all year long, all had Pete Carmichael at dead last or bottom three the entire year. Art Smith for the Falcons. He was also bottom three. And we kept saying on this channel, if you're Mickey Loomis, you have to hold that analytical report up and say, Pete Carmichael, can you explain this? I don't need to hear oh, well, if we got this player in here, or, ah, well, we had a couple penalties, or, ah, we we had a couple bad breaks. All that kind of vernacular and talk was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Now it's hard numbers. It's no more luck factor. It's no more tough schedule. It's no more whatever else. It is weighted analytics, and there's a million groups that do it. And Pete Carmichael had indefensible numbers for two years. And he couldn't run from it. And that's what happened. And I'm glad Mickey Loomis made the decision. I'm glad the Saints are looking at this. Because it would have been real easy for Mickey Loomis to say, ah, Pete's a Saint. You know, Pete's a Saint saint for life. He's been here for almost two decades. We believe in our guy. And just old school mentality. It would have been easy to do that. So good on, good on Mickey. You can go deep dive into all those analytics, and I understand why you would. But... What you need to know is a year ago, the Saints were 19th in the NFL in total offense. This year, they were 14th in the NFL in total offense. And you have far too much invested to be that poor on that side of the ball. So you had to make a change. Yeah. So my hope is the Saints go find someone that can maximize Derek Carr. Well, also, you look at you look at Pete Carmichael, you look at the Saints, right? So here's here's the deal. Saints were disappointing this year. Offensively, a lot of question marks and just play calling and, and, you know, inventiveness and all that stuff. Someone's got to take a fall. Okay, who's going to take a fall? Mickey Loomis? Nope. Dennis Allen? Possible, but it looks like he's safe. Derek Carr? Nope. We are fully financed into that. He cannot be benched or cut or any of that stuff for this year. So that leaves us with Pete Carmichael. He probably is pseudo, sort of, kind of the fall guy for this. Is he directly responsible for the offense? Oh, actually, he is. So it's good that he's gone. It's good that he's the fall guy. The worst case scenario would have been if we would have fired some assistant or or whatever else. Carmichael did a bad job for two years, and we're getting rid of him. Deservedly, all right? And Matt's right. We have a lot invested in this offense. So you have to bring somebody in who can get the most out of Carr and get the most out of the weapons we have there, like Alvin Kamara, uh, you know, Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed, Taysom Hill even to an extent. That's the goal of this next offensive coordinator, is to come in, here's your core, here's the core package, what else do you need? Where else do you want to go in free agency? Where else do you want to go in the draft? Whatever. But here's your core. All right, They're not bringing in an OC to take Bo Nix 15th overall and develop Bo Nix for the next couple of years. I'll go ahead and tell you that right now. 
If you're thinking, oh, cool, new OC means new quarterback means, no, it does not. In that, that OC, when they're interviewing him, it will be, how are you going to get the most out of Chris Olave? How are you going to get the most out of Alvin Kamara? How are you going to get the most out of Derek Carr? It's not going to be, what do you think about Michael Penix Jr.? Who can come in, take what we have now, and mold it into something really good? And get this offense going. Because if you don't, Dennis Allen and Mickey Loomis, you're running out of people to blame. Sure. Oh, next up, Allen. Michael deserves yeah. his share of the blame for what went wrong yes. this year. And the last two years offensively. But when you keep pointing the finger and you keep having a fall guy, eventually it falls on you. And Allen they're running is out next. of people to blame down. The next two, I'll go ahead and spoiler alert. The next two are Allen and Carr. So if if nothing changes, if it's bad, if it's disappointing and whatever, Allen will be gone. And then the next step would be financially wiggling to get rid of Carr, whether that means cutting him, whether that means benching him for the last game to save a la Russell Wilson. I, I don't know the ins and outs of the contract and how they're going to navigate it, but that would be the two next fall guys. Is, is Allen is, is on a short timer. If the Saints start slow or the Saints start bad or we're getting booed at home, all that stuff, Allen's going to be gone. And then it falls to Carr. And then it falls to a rebuild. So there's only two more fall guys. So I'll go ahead and give you another spoiler. I'm giving a lot of spoilers in this video. Mickey Loomis isn't on the hot seat. And as long as Gail Benson owns this team, Mickey Loomis ain't going anywhere. Okay? So he's not even possible as a fall guy. There's only two left. So we either get it right with this hire, fix the offense, fix the defense, Dennis, and the Saints will be fine, hopefully. Or get rid of Carr, get rid of Allen, and we're moving towards a bit of a rebuild. On in New Orleans. But that is an undeniable part of the story. It, it, it was time. 18 years, Pete Carmichael has been there. He has been a, a loyal lieutenant. And it was it was time for the New Orleans Saints to make a change and to see if they can fix this thing. And that's fine. I think we all agree. But I also think that we should take time to acknowledge the good. Because sometimes when things get messy, we focus on the mess and we forget to be thankful for the good. It's like, you remember the opening scene of Wedding Crashers? When, when they're in there doing the, the divorce mediation and they can't get, get the, the couple to agree on anything. It's like, it, uh, like and then they, they bring them back to center. The wedding had to be fun. You get you the decorations, family families coming together. That's a nice moment. What'd you have to eat? Crab cakes. Are you kidding me? Crab cakes? How do you not have a good time eating crab, crab cakes. cakes? I love them. So the point is, like, yes, it ended badly. Yes, it was time to go. But you can't... Guys, I mean, what, what, uh, where do I even begin? I didn't have Wedding Crasher quotes and sound bites on my bingo card for this video. You know, I, I didn't, it's like, you know, see a different movie. We all have that one friend, right, who's still quoting a Happy Gilmore. That one friend who's still quoting Big Daddy. You know, it's like, you know, bro brother, new movies have come out, you know, maybe, maybe get Netflix, check it out. You know, I don't know if we need to still be quoting stepbrothers. You know what I mean? Well, let's continue. Ignore all that Pete Carmichael did in New Orleans. And I'm not sitting here to telling you that he, he deserves a lion's share of the credit or even a portion of the credit. Yes, I, like, I don't know that I look at the offenses for all those years and think it was Peyton Breeze Carmichael. I don't think it was a tripod, and without one of them, it doesn't work. I think you could have removed Pete Carmichael, and Peyton Breeze probably would have been just fine. But he so then what do we deserve to give him thanks for? This is that, tippid, that timid tip-tap-toeing that I'm talking about. Uh, look, I, don't, I, I hate to drive the point home. The guy couldn't coach. Couldn't do it. We don't have to try our hardest to go find something to congratulate him. We don't have to give him a $50 gift card to Shoney's on the way out. We don't have to give him, 
you know, the, the, the gift basket and say, toodaloo. Mans was employed for almost two decades. It is what it is, okay? I don't think Breeze and Peyton and the Saints offense would have had any less success if Carmichael would have been somebody else. I think Sean Payton is an offensive genius. I think he's one of the best coaches of the last 20 years, for sure. I think Drew Brees is one of the top five quarterbacks to ever live, in my opinion, number two. Rocking and rolling, okay? Carmichael was just there in the room. He's just a guy. We don't have to make this more difficult than it is, all right? It is what it is. Thank you for your service. Tip of the cap. We wish you well in future endeavors, but we don't have to do this, this farewell tour. But he was also an undeniable part of it from the beginning, starting in 2006. Remember, Pete Carmichael was in San Diego with Drew Brees and then chose to come to New Orleans at a time post-Katrina when not many people did for the reasons we revered, Sean Payton for taking the job and Brees for signing here and Reggie Bush for embracing the city after he was drafted and all of that at the time when the city and the region desperately needed it, Pete Carmichael came as well. I mean, like, really think about what this conversation has become. This conversation has become the biggest natural disaster in the United States history hit New Orleans, destroyed the city, completely shattered life in the Gulf Co- uh, on the Gulf Coast, rocked everyone's world. No one would come to New Orleans, but one man decided to. One man embraced the city, riding in knight in shining armor, who was the one man who embraced New Orleans when it was down the most? Pete Carmichael. Because of Pete Carmichael's dedication to this city, because of his loyalty to the city, we rebuilt. We persevered. Yes, Sean Payton and Drew Brees were there. Let's not focus on that. Without Pete Carmichael's dedication, would we have won? That many NFC titles? Would we have gone to the Super Bowl? Would we have won the Super Bowl? Would we have won the NFC South? I don't know. Without his loyalty and dedication to the city of New Orleans at a time where we needed it the most, Pete came riding in. And he stayed for 18 years and did everything that was asked of him. In 2011, when Sean Payton took that hit on the sideline by the Bucks and like busted up his leg, do you remember who called plays the rest of the year? It was Pete Carmichael. And oh, by the way, that was the best offense in the NFL. <clears throat> a year later, Bounty Gate 2012, Sean Payton's out. Who stepped up? Pete Carmichael. And the Saints have- I think Pete could, could do that. I, I do think he could, when Payton did the game planning, when Payton schemed it all up, I think Pete could just call the plays. The problem with Pete, and the same thing in the this season, he could not adjust off of the schemed plays. He could not read the game script. He could not, he couldn't call the game. He could certainly read the plays. He could certainly get the plays in. It was just everything else. That's where he needed Peyton. And even if he was calling the plays and Peyton was dealing with whatever scandal or broken leg or whatever it was at the time, Peyton is still the one scheming it up, game planning. It's still his system, right? He's still orchestrating it. So don't get that mixed up either. Had a top five offense in the NFL that year <clears throat> as well. So, you know, I look at all the time with Carmichael. You went to the NFC Championship game in 2006. You won the Super Bowl in 2009. You won the division seven times. You went to the playoffs nine times. There was so much good during the greatest run ever, and he was there for literally all of it. 18 years, man. 18 years. That dude was part of it. Yes, Dennis Allen and Doug Marone are, are still on staff now, and they were here in 06, but both left and came back. Carmichael's been there for 18 years. That part also questionable or controversial yet brave. It's like, why? Why didn't he take any other jobs? Why didn't he have any other offers? Why didn't he have any other interviews or other you know, head coaching looks or OC looks or any of that stuff? Why, why wasn't that the case? I think the writing's on the wall. And he deserves respect and admiration for the job he did over nearly 20 years in New Orleans. Don't let the mess at the end stain the entirety 
of the run that the Saints had with Pete Carmichael alongside riding riding sidecar to Sean Payton. It is not. I don't think anybody, I don't think anyone, let me know in the comments, I don't think anyone is confusing the two. I think they're very distinct chapters. <laughs> very distinct chapters. In the Sean Payton, Drew Brees era, and then the new Dennis Allen, Pete Carmichael era. I don't think anybody's like, yeah, you know, Pete was really firing on all cylinders here, but here, and eh, not so much. But we'll just forget those last couple of years. We'll focus on the good. I, this is the first I've heard of this line of thinking. I mean, I, I don't equate the two at all. One iota. It's the same as I would equate the backup quarterback. Like giving the backup quarterback some some shine and be like, well, I mean, he was there. He was in the room. He was he was helping Breeze game plan. He was running through practices. You know, he was there. Could have been anyone. You know, I, that's how I look at his contributions. I mean, look, there were bad moments. We 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 lived through Beast Quake and we lived through the Minneapolis Miracle and we lived through the Nola No Call. Like, but what marriage, what relationship doesn't have ups and downs? That's part of it. It's just part of being emotionally attached to something. There's going to be the good hell are we talking be bad. about? The good makes the bad hurt more, and the bad makes the good even filled with more elation. It makes it. We're going to end the video here because I'm a little confused. I want you all to remember this. <clears throat> a little advice. When it comes to sports right now, it's very important to be thinking down the street, stats, deep analytics, multiple sources. Uh, again, Sumer Sports, I always plug them. Love love Sumer Sports. Eric Eager on Twitter. Uh, Sumer Sports, VEASAN, the Vegas uh, Stats and Information Network. They have great breakdowns of the Vegas market. We always reference the market. It's how you can stay ahead of the news. Uh, Patent Analytics, we referenced him as well. Go on Twitter. Do yourself a favor. Unfollow the Skip Baylesses, the Jason Whitlocks, the whoever else. You know, the, the, the people that are just spouting narrative. Get them off the timeline. Because they're the ones that are telling you, no, nah, the Eagles will figure it out. No, nah, they're Super Bowl runner-up, so they're not going to lose to the Bucks. No, nah, take the Eagles minus three on the road. Yeah, they haven't covered a game in two and a half months. But yeah, take them. Who cares? What? The Buccaneers blitz at the highest rate in the NFL. What? Jalen Hurts is 27th uh, EPA against the blitz. Ah, that doesn't matter. They're sweet. You haven't seen our TikTok? Get that off your timeline. Get the Bucks blitz at blank rate. Eagles are blank percent against the blitz. Get that on your timeline. All right, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta balance the scales with with how uh, sports media is right now. But thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Get on down there. Pete Carmichael era is over. The Saints are moving forward. We march forward, ladies and gentlemen. The next OC, all that stuff to search, all that's happening as I'm filming this right now. There's talk of Loomis becoming vice president of the Saints, a new GM, uh, Harley getting promoted to, to GM, all kind of stuff happening. It's an exciting time to be a Saints fan. Get on down in those comments, and I'll see you in the next video.